tonight, you'll be able to see four planets with the naked eye. I was looking up at the red planet last night, thinking to myself, whenever it comes for me the opportunity to live on Mars, I will go in a heartbeat. And I can tell you three reasons why. Imagine that you live on an island in the middle of the ocean, and that on your island there is a myth, a legend, that every so many generations a giant wave arrives, tall as the moon, and wipes out your civilization. Also imagine that on the distant horizon, and perhaps only on the clearest of days, you can see a second island, but you have no way to get there. And then someone invents a boat. Would you take that boat and go to the second island? You might do it out of pure curiosity. You might do it as a means to safeguard your civilization from the next cataclysmic wave. Those are good motivations. But perhaps the most compelling reason for you to go to that second island, or for me to go to Mars, is what we might learn. Despite its fiery appearance, Mars is much, much colder than Earth. You can't walk around wearing shorts. No. To live on Mars, we would have to terraform it. We'd have to change the climate to make it a little bit more like Switzerland. And this is not, this is not science fiction. It's possible on Mars because there are giant reserves of carbon dioxide at the poles and frozen on the surface. And if we can add a little bit of heat to Mars, we could start a runaway greenhouse effect that in 50 to 100 years would release so much CO2 that the pressure and the temperature on Mars would be hot enough and thick enough that liquid water could flow. Scientists suggest that we could do this by smashing asteroids into the planet, or by exploding hydrogen bombs, or even with giant space mirrors that would redirect sunlight onto the polar caps. But probably the most practical method would be for people living on Mars to release hydrocarbons. We already have some experience with how that works here on Earth. And then after a few thousand years, we could introduce more and more complex plants and animals, and eventually there would be enough oxygen on Mars that my great-great-great-grandchildren could walk around in shorts and without any scuba gear. So, in addition to satisfying our curiosity and helping protect the web of life against disasters that, for example, killed the dinosaurs, going to Mars could teach us things that we may not yet even imagine. We could, for example, learn how to control the climate back here on Earth. So tonight, after you leave, I encourage you, look up at the sky and find your second island.